Hi, myself Dr. Vivek Shashindran and today we will talk about nasal bleeding or what we refer to as epistaxis. Well, epistaxis is one of the most common problems that we encounter in the casualty. Epistaxis can be seen in young patients as well as in elderly patients, so it does not spare any age group per se. Now in children, the most common cause for nasal bleed would be nose picking. So children who have this habit of repeatedly introducing their fingers into the nose are bound to traumatize the lining of the nasal cavity resulting in nasal bleed. So this is a very important history that we got to elicit when a child is brought with history of recurrent nasal bleed. Whereas if you see in the elderly, the most common cause for nasal bleed would be uncontrolled hypertension. So many a times the patients would not be aware of the fact that he or she has hypertension and probably the nasal bleed would be the first sign. And subsequently on evaluating these patients, we kind of pick up or diagnosis hypertension. Apart from this, you can also encounter nasal bleed in patients who have nasal masses, which could either be uh, benign or cancerous lesions of the nasal cavity. Now, most of these present with repeated or recurrent episodes of nasal bleed. Now, if you see an adolescent young male presenting with profuse nasal bleed, you have to always rule out the possibility of a tumor called as juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. So this is something that is specifically seen in adolescent males and usually they present with profuse nasal bleed. Now you could also have nasal bleed subsequent to forceful blowing of the nose, now which is usually habitual or if there is an associated sinus infection or inflammation, you can have nasal bleed. However, this would not be a frank nasal bleed, rather it would be uh, blood stains in the nasal discharge. Now patients who are on cardiac medications, now these patients generally are on drugs like uh, clopilet, warfarin, aspirin. So these are blood thinners and these patients are again prone to develop nasal bleeding. Now we should also keep in mind that a subset of patients who present with nasal bleeding could have underlying hematological problem that is some kind of an issue related to the clotting mechanism. So in general, when you have recurrent nasal bleed, it warrants a detailed investigation or evaluation. Now, what are the things that you could probably do immediately when you have a nasal bleed? The simplest thing is probably to pinch the nostrils and to breathe through your mouth. Keep your mouth open and breathe gently and just relax and lie down. Application of ice packs over the nose can be done and most of the situations the bleeding would settle. However, if the bleeding persists, you need to seek medical attention. And patients with recurrent nasal bleed needs to be evaluated with blood investigations. They may have to undergo a nasal endoscopy. And if there are relevant findings on nasal endoscopy, these patients may have to be subjected to radiological evaluation in the form of a CT scan of the nose and paranasal sinuses. Thank you.